note we had filed today, it, it, supported by sworn testimony of jurors, is that the clerk of court had improper private communications with the jurors and the subject matter, the subject matter of those communications was the credibility of the defense that the Murdoch legal defense team put up and it was a believability of the defendant's own testimony. The clerk of court is the, uh, the person that makes sure the jury gets their food. It's, if, if they're put up for the night, someplace to stay. Their travel accommodations are, are, are met. They're not someone that ever should talk to them about the case. I've never had it happen. Again, I've been doing this for a very long time. Never heard of it happening until this case. I never heard of it either. I mean, no one is supposed to discuss anything with the jury. By the way, Dick Harputley and Jim Griffin down there at, at uh, Crime Con as well, talking to anybody and everybody about this, trust me. Um, and, and they believe that, that they deserve a new trial based upon all this. And the bottom line is, we don't know exactly what happened. I have to hear for myself what these jurors say in sworn testimony versus a crafted affidavit. And I want to hear what the other jurors have to say. Because I don't know if the jurors are necessarily going to agree with one another. Um, but this is bad. This is bad. This is, not, this, this is potentially um, devastating to that jury verdict. Now, the, the Colton County Court of... Uh, a clerk of the court, Becky Hill, discussed the deliberations on season two of Netflix's Murdoch Murders, a Southern Scandal. So, I mean, this just dropped, this series just dropped, and she's like all over it. Let's listen to what she had to say. I had a feeling from our time together with the jury out at Moselle that it was not going to take our jury long to make the decision in this case. It's just called that women's intuition. Now, she, she talked about Moselle, right? Moselle was the property where the, where the murder took place. The jury went for a jury view to examine it. And she said, like she said right there, I knew. I knew at that moment. Well, this is part of what the defense is alleging. Take a look. The next day on March 1st, 2023, the jury visited Moselle, the site of the murders. During the visit, the four-person, juror 826, and Ms. Hill, that's Becky Hill, the clerk, walked off to have yet another private conversation. In her book, uh, the clerk, Becky Hill, more vaguely hints at communicating her opinion on Mr. Murdoch's guilt to the jury during the visit to the Moselle property. And they put in a quote from her book. While the jurors viewed the Moselle property, we all could hear and see Alex's story was impossible. Some of us, either from the courthouse, law enforcement, or jury at Moselle, had an epiphany and shared our thoughts with our eyes. At that moment, many of us standing there knew, I knew, and they knew that Alec was guilty. All right, so you've got the book. Now it's season two from the Netflix series. Is this a problem? Let's bring him back in our think tank, Al Wunsch, Darnell Crossland, Judge Gail Byers. Uh, Darnell, is this a problem? A absolutely. I mean, I've seen less things uh, become big problems. So Ms. Hill, she used her women's intuition to figure out why her husband comes home late every night, not for uh, whether Alex murdered anybody. Um, but in terms now, there's of no it, indication that her husband's coming home late every night. I just want to make sure uh, that you're just using sort of intuition. an analogy here, right? Okay, go ahead. Yes, yes, by analogy. Um, allegedly. Um, so, uh, so, but in terms of a problem, what you're looking for is whether it's reversible error. And um, I don't want to hear some judge say that, you know, yeah, that was pretty bad, but there's no... Uh, proof that even with that, the jury wouldn't have found him guilty because there was so much other evidence. Um, and I know Har Harpoot, I, forget, I don't know how to say his Harpootlian. name. Harpootlian. Harpootlian would probably agree with me that um, he doesn't want that. There's no correction you could do here. He wants a new trial, and I think he deserves a new trial. This is magnanimous. Uh, Judge Gail Byers, is it that clear if, if any sort of conversation connected to the case at all by the clerk? How far can the clerk go in her role as the clerk in speaking with uh, the jury? I will tell you, um, Vinnie, uh, as I kind of chuckled a bit, um, 
But this is very problematic. Um, and it's problematic because it also kind of impugns the integrity of the court in general. It's the clerk is an extension of the court itself. And if the public cannot trust the process for everyone, then they're going to have trouble trusting the process for anyone. So the fact of the matter is, is that, yes, this is concerning. Um, Mr. Murdoch may very well get a new trial, even though there seems to be overwhelming evidence as to um, his culpability. The fact of the matter is, is that the process, a clerk should only be communicating with jurors regarding process at best and minor administrative things as indicated. Maybe what's your lunch order? Um, is something wrong with your accommodations if they're sequestered? Do you have a family matter that needs to be tended to or do you need to make a phone call or do you have some kind of emergency that the court needs to accommodate? But there should never be a conversation yeah. between court staff and anyone on that jury. In fact, judges don't even talk to attorneys without everyone being there. That's called ex parte. And they surely don't have conversations with jurors and in fact, go out of their way to even avoid the appearance of that. Why? Because even if it's not bad, it looks bad. And I'll tell you what, that whole thing about, you know, coordinating lunches, there were only three food trucks there. So it was pretty easy choice each day. You could get the uh, brisket uh, sandwich, very, very good. Uh, pulled pork sandwich, very, very good. Then they had uh, cheese steaks. Um, a, a guy from Italy married a woman from Philadelphia and then moved to Walterboro, South Carolina. They had the cheesesteaks going there. And then there was uh, a, one other one that had some sort of desserts. Now, Becky I'm Hill. I'm going to ask you how you know that. Because <laughs> I was there. <laughs> Becky Hill also talked about Murdoch's guilt in that same episode of the Netflix series. Uh, let's take a look. I do think Alec pulled the trigger. And then I think he had help with cleaning up everything that needed cleaning up. And what we had left was the crime scene that took us to the trial. That's interesting. Al, Al your thoughts about. Is this Netflix series a further problem in this case that she's speaking here? Well, I, I think it is a further problem, and I, I don't like seeing this kind of stuff. I don't think she should be allowed to write a book about this. I don't think she should be able to do uh, this Netflix series if she's still in the employ of the uh, state and in the court system. But <clears throat> the question about her having a conversation with one of the jurors, perhaps in private, I don't necessarily have a problem with that because what if one of the jurors has a complaint about one of the other jurors? One of the other jurors is doing something wrong or they see something that's, uh, you know, uh, not appropriate under the circumstances. Let me ask you Wouldn't this, though. They, it, it was it, yes. it's alleged during the jury view where there was supposed to be just silence. No one was supposed to be speaking at the jury view. OK, well, I mean, I'm not necessarily saying that it was appropriate in the sense that uh, if they were supposed to be silent at that time and there was some other problem there. But if there's a problem, I, I would want to know if if I was her that something was going on. And if I'm a juror, I want to know who I could speak to. Okay. I mean, I'm not going to go to the judge and I'm not going to go to the lawyers. I, I have to go to the person that is the one who leads me in and leads me out. That's her. All right, let me, let me just go around the horn here. I just want a number. No explanation, just a number. Zero no chance of him getting a new trial. 10, it's a lock. He's getting a new trial. Darnell. Nine. Judge. Seven. Seven. Al. Seven. Three. Three. All right. And you see, did you notice that, Darnell? Al wanted to explain, and then he remembered <laughs> he, he was not permitted to.